Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So the robots are coming. The robots are coming. I have warned people that the robots are coming. Um, automation. People keep, they don't bring it up. I brought it up yesterday to, um, to Sam Ronan. And kind of asked the question, why don't they bring this up? This seems like to be a big fucking deal. You're talking about a situation where civilization, our civilization, hell, let's not say all of civilization, let's just say us in this country, let's pretend that America is the edge of the world. They used to think Rome was the edge of the world, let's pretend America is the edge of the world. A complete society based around this idea of consumption and work in order to generate something that's not real called profit that profit generation is a mythical device that allows some people in society to a exploit others and to be convinced the other people in the society that are being exploited that that exploitation is somehow a good thing and necessary by the way What does that society do when the political apparatus of the society is completely incapable of even addressing actual reality anymore? It's not mentioned. It's not talked about. Having the conversation on what to do about it in some degree changes the paradigm of that particular society. You have two problems. The first problem is this idea that it three you have three problems the first one is fundamental this idea that work is somehow the bee's knees that that is the point of existence when you have automation decimating 90 percent of the jobs what else do you find to live and does that society that looks at life or looks at work as being the bee's knees of the civilization meaning your existence, your purpose of existence, a society that literally looks at the world in that way. How does it deal with its irrelevance in the face of a machine that does the job better? And does society get the point of saying, oh, wait, we can have free time. As we, if we as a society make the choice that we can have free time, we can have free time. As opposed to this thing of we need to find new ways of work. Yes, there are always going to be ways of work, particularly as, as technology advances, it's going to create new positions, but it's also going to get rid of most positions. The second problem is that same society that's so work oriented looks down on people who don't. Now, you can understand why it, in a situation where you have scarcity, you know, the person who's not pulling their fair share in the group yeah if your survival was on the line that's a problem but what happens when that society no longer has scarcity in that way and the society is completely geared towards looking at this thing of a oh, welfare is a problem if you give people health care that's socialism I mean we can't go around and just giving people education they have to earn it right being a person is not enough. Like the society itself doesn't necessarily benefit from the person getting an education. Those people just go create other jobs and they just go, you know, invent things and build things and discover things. And the third problem, I, I would say, and I guess to be fair, you can probably fold that into the other two problems. Your political apparatus it's completely seized up by the way cash affects the political apparatus. Meaning, your political apparatus doesn't necessarily respond to the needs of the people in that particular constituency. Your model itself works on this idea of capital. That model of capital pretends as if real things aren't real, like the environment and human beings. It pretends that if capital is a real thing, and that real thing is more important than anything else. And that real thing is so important that it can influence the political apparatus. 
meaning the people with it have the capacity to influence the political apparatus. Secondary media is saturated with it. So you have this problem of a society that is geared in a way that doesn't necessarily, it's almost like it's wired not to be able to deal with automation. That's a big fucking challenge. But that challenge can be an amazing opportunity. How do you get your society from a place where it is now to a place of understanding that automation is going to be the future in general, that the majority of the jobs are going to go away by automation and that as a society, we need to come together to A, deal with the issue and B, realize that who we are, our value, our worth, it's not associated with what we do. It's inherent. And in being inherent and in being not associated with what we do, meaning just by virtue of being a person, you have value. The fact, well, whether or not the person works or not and what that person does doesn't define that particular person. Um, you have to define yourself by you. What do you want to do when you wake up in the morning if you had nothing else pushing you to do it? And yes, there is work. I mean, there's no situation where you're getting rid of work. At least I don't think there is. Because ultimately, as a human being, there are going to be things that you yourself just enjoy doing. I enjoy medicine, so I'm going to be a doctor. I enjoy architecture, so I'm going to be an architect. I enjoy painting, art, whatever. Whatever. You're still contributing to the society in the ways that human beings can contribute to the society. But no, I don't need you doing repetitive jobs. Walmart is taking a direct shot at Amazon and making checkout lanes obsolete. This is an AOL finance. Walmart is rolling out a new technology in its stores that enable shoppers to scan and pay for their items without checkout lanes, registers, or cashiers. Once they're finished shopping, they click a button to pay for their goods and show the digital receipt to a store greeter on their way out the door. Amazon revealed plans in December to introduce similar technology to its own brick and mortar grocery concept called Amazon Go, which is in the planning phases. But Walmart is leaping ahead of Amazon and already rolling it out to more than a dozen stores in Texas, Florida, South Dakota, Arkansas, Georgia, and Kentucky. For shoppers with smartphones, the retailer provides retailers, retailers provides handheld scanners. The stores also have options for customers who don't want to link up a credit card to the scanical accounts. Those customers can simply click finish on the app, then report to a self checkout register where they scan, where they scan a barcode for the total purchase and pay for their goods. Now, this is now, it's not 10 years. This is now. Richard Wolf aired, I think it was the thing the other day, a t-shirt factory, able to essentially make like thousands and thousands of t-shirts within a few minutes. You got to deal with it. and right now politicians are not even talking about it we're still having this conversation on how horrible trump is and nazis and all of these other issues that don't really get to the main issue of how we're organized as a society and how do you deal with issues like this as they rise um i say you deal with them through an organic change of your society how you guys are, how we arrange, how we're organized. Universal basic income is a poor man's way of pushing off the inevitable. Look, part of the UBI is to give money to the bottom, which look, I'm for, uh, I think that's perfectly fine. There is a caveat. Giving money to the bottom like that is done purely to keep things going. It's almost like, um, an injection of money at the bottom in order to keep the money going to the top. We need to keep the system going. How do we keep the system going? By giving money to the bottom. So that's that's the first thought, and that's not necessarily bad. But if it's a situation where you end up with a permanent, 
poverty class because that amount of money it's like more and more people are becoming unemployed more and more things are being automated more and more of it however is held by private interests I mean it, it's you end up with a you know this kind of us and them mentality ultimately your society is going to collapse on its own steam I would rather that be done in a sensible way and the reason I said it's going to collapse on its own steam because right now it's built on using resources as fast as possible to make as much money as profitable possible even though money is not real and even though the supplies and the resources that it's burning through is you're not living in a sustainable way with your environment like I said if America was the edge of the world there's a finite capacity for the country to handle meaning there's a finite there's a finite amount of resources that we can pull there's a there's a carrying capacity we ignore that as if it's not real I'm just saying we ignore real things in the pursuit of profit that's all I'm saying at some point we have to talk about it at some point it has to be dealt with either we deal with it from a conscious standpoint meaning we're aware of this and we're going to take changes to handle this that's only a progressive direction there is no right-wing solution to it oh okay to be fair there probably is one but you're not going to like it so you deal with it head on you got to deal with it head on so i'll leave it at that this is i guess one of those things of hey be aware of what's taking place and bring this up to each and every politician that you come across because this is a big fucking deal so all right guys if you enjoy the content feel free to share right subscribe and of course you can always support the work through patreon